Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if CO2 is really a greenhouse gas. And I'd like to thank Ren for sponsoring this video. Bill Nye famously did a video where he showed how to do a simple experiment to show how CO2 is a greenhouse gas. He said to grab two jars and fill one of them with air and the other one with CO2. Then put a thermometer in both of them and shine a heat lamp on both of them. He said within a few minutes you should see that the one with CO2 will rise in temperature faster than the one with air. So let's try this. So I have two identical jars here and two thermal couples in here. The readings are going right here. This top one, if I hold it, you can see the temperature go up. The one on the left is on the top. The one on the right is on the bottom here. So let's fill the left one with CO2. So the temperature went down a bit from the CO2 gas expanding in there out of the compressed cylinder. Let's just wait for it to equilibrate and get back to the same room temperature. Okay, they're now within half a degree of each other. One on the left is at 65.1 and the one on the right is 65.7. So now let's put our IR source. I'm going to put it directly in between them. Okay, I can feel the heat. Let's do a quick time lapse so we don't have to wait. So these are staying remarkably consistent to how they started. They started off about a half a degree difference between the two, and it's about that exact same difference right now, 10 degrees later. So they're consistently rising in temperature together. From what I can see, there's no difference between these two jars in the way that they're absorbing this IR light. So why didn't this work? Well, there's a lot wrong with this setup. The first thing is that the two jars are made of glass, and glass doesn't let IR through. You can see that when I take this IR camera, you can't see my hand behind this pane of glass. So the only reason they're rising in temperature right now is not because the gas inside is absorbing the IR light, but the glass is absorbing it, and the glass is heating up, and then that's heating up the air or the CO2 inside of these. But another version of this experiment just shines regular light, not a heat lamp. In this case, you get a pretty significant difference between the CO2 and the air. But the reason that this happens is not because CO2 is absorbing infrared light, but it's because you're creating an actual greenhouse. The reason a greenhouse gets warm is mainly because it doesn't allow the warm air that gets heated up from the light to mix with the outside cooler air. So actually, if you used argon, which isn't even a greenhouse gas, you would still get significant heating, more than air. This is because argon and CO2 are both more dense than air. So in this type of setup, what you're actually measuring is the heat flow characteristics of the gas and the convection of the gas. So this is a really bad experiment to test whether or not CO2 is actually a greenhouse gas. We know this is true because there have been a few published papers that show this type of setup shows heating of the CO2 that's way more than the theoretical heating possible due to CO2's absorption spectrum in the IR range. So overall, this method of showing that CO2 is a greenhouse gas by shining a light in a jar of CO2 just doesn't work. So how can we show that CO2 is a greenhouse gas? Well, being a greenhouse gas means that it absorbs infrared energy and eventually turns it into heat. So let's just focus on the part where it absorbs infrared light. I actually got the idea for this setup from a paper in the Journal of Chemical Education. I'm going to measure the temperature of my hot plate here using my infrared thermometer. So my hot plate back here is going to serve as an infrared source. And then I have an infrared thermometer here that's going to act as our infrared sensor. So we're going to see how much infrared light gets from the hot plate to the sensor here. The way this works is by measuring the amount of IR light that hits the sensor. The more intense the IR light, the higher the temperature. So if I stick something that blocks the IR light, I get a reading of a lower temperature on the hot plate. For example, if I stick a whole piece of glass in between, it absorbs all of the IR light from the hot plate. So the temperature is way lower, it's just reading the surface of the glass temperature. If I stick something like this screen in between, I get a reduced temperature because some of the IR light is getting blocked by the screen and some is getting through to the sensor here. So this mesh drops it to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's test what happens when I put a bag of CO2 in between here versus a bag of air. Okay, here's our CO2 bag. And here's our air bag. Okay, so I have my bag of CO2 and my bag of air here. 
Okay, so I have this aimed at the hot plate here. You can see where the laser's aiming. So first, let's see the temperature with air. We're reading around 315 degrees Fahrenheit. But with CO2, around 300 Fahrenheit, 305 Fahrenheit. Air, 315, CO2, 305. It's a huge difference. Air, CO2. Air, CO2. You can see that the CO2 showed a lower temperature on the hot plate. Now remember that we're using the IR thermometer as a measuring device of IR light. This isn't actually showing the temperature of the CO2 gas in between. It's showing the reading of the hot plate behind the CO2 gas. But since the CO2 is absorbing some of the IR light, you get a lower reading than you should have had without the CO2 being there. This shows that the CO2 is actually absorbing the IR light. We've essentially just created a spectrometer here. I love this experiment because it doesn't depend on the heat flow characteristics of the bag. It doesn't depend on any other factors other than the absorption of infrared light. So it's a really easy setup with clear results the two. It doesn't depend on where your thermal couple is exactly placed. It's a very clear distinction between CO2 and air. So we know there's not a question that CO2 is a greenhouse gas. The question is, what are we going to do about it? And that brings me to the sponsor for this video, REN. REN is a simple and effective way to reduce your personal CO2 emissions. On their website, you can calculate your carbon footprint, then offset it by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how to reduce it. No one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what you have left after reducing. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint, you can receive monthly updates from your projects you support. You get to see what your money's spent on, with photos and details on every tree planted, every acre reforested, and every ton of carbon offset. One of the projects that's really exciting is how they're creating biochar in California. This helps reduce forest fires and provides a carbon capture method that keeps carbon locked up in the earth instead of the air. So if you want to help reduce the greenhouse effects of CO2 on the earth, you can go check out REN. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and check out theactionlab.com where you can get Action Lab t-shirts, Action Lab experiment boxes, and even Action Lab art. And thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.